Greetings, salutations, and welcome to the next video in the Inventor Tips and Tricks series, part of the playlist, Inventor Tips and Tricks. This is a follow-on from the last video I did, which is how to use the new material library. This is how to create a nice, fancy-looking texture. I had a request from it, well, a couple of requests, actually. Um, how to import your own pictures or images, textures, and use them in Inventor. So, you know, I can't just show you one technique that works for all. So I'm going to try and use something which is very specialist and hopefully you can take this technique, use the bones of it and apply whatever I've done to whatever you need to do. So I've, I'm doing something kind of quite complicated here. Um, so obviously as you can see it's a tire and I'm going to import a picture of a tire tread and apply it to the top face of my tire. That's what I'm going to do. And if you start there thinking well yeah, I want to do a tyre, Neil. I, I want to do a tyre, but how do I model a tyre? Please tell me how to model a tyre. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be rude, but if you can't model a tyre, you probably don't need to be at this point yet. You know, what I'm trying to say is... Shit, I can't swim! I know I can't! So you know what I do? I stay my black ass out the pool! Take a step back, do that bit first, get the hang of that bit, and then move on to this bit. Uh, you know, it, it, feel free to ask me how to do this, and I'll create another video for you. So anyway, I digress. Okay. The tire tread itself. Where do we get the picture from? Google is your friend. I've went to Google Images and I've done a Google search for tire texture. Brings up a whole load of images. Be careful which one you select because a lot of them are copyrighted. They've got you know these sort of swirly things superimposed over them because these websites want to charge you for downloading the picture. And what the hell was that? I ain't paying for no picture. So I've went for a, a what looks like a non-copyrighted tire texture from hopefully a free web. I'll be deleting it afterwards anyway so I'm not going to be using it for anything in production uh, but this one's a good tire texture it's uh, another thing to look for another top tip if you are going to be applying a texture to your inventor model and it needs to be a continuous texture uh, make sure that the profiles overlap each other they're kind of continuous so what I mean by that is so sort of this bit of tread here joins onto this bit of tread there so that groove there follows on from that groove there so I can so connect this image side by side and it will be one continuous picture. There'll be no breakages in the textured tile, is what I'm trying to say. So, you know, this one here would be absolutely no good whatsoever. Um, neither would this one here because that goes up and that sort of just, yeah, it's wrong. It's all completely wrong. It would look stupid. So be careful which one you pick. So when I did a tire texture search, scroll down a bit, I went for this one here, which is this one here. Right click, save image as. And then drop it on your desktop and I've named it as Tire. Surprisingly enough. What next? Okay, well the tire texture is going to be applied to the top face of the tire, obviously. You've all seen a tire before, so it's going to be this face, that face, and this face here. Right, Inventor isn't a genius. Well, it is a genius to some respect, but it isn't a magician. So you can't just say, here's a texture inventor, make my tire look like a tire, because it's not going to happen. It doesn't know how big your model is, it doesn't know how big the picture is. We need to manipulate it and get it right. So a good place to start is to know what your surface area is. Now I'm going to be applying the image straight down on top of my tire, so I need to know the extents of my tire top tread. So to do that, there's many ways of doing this. The inspect tool doesn't really work very well on a on sort of curved surfaces so I'm just going to do an F7 I'm going to do a project cut edges and I'm going to say what is the size from the edge here to the edge here and we're looking at 114.902 millimeters now top tip again I did test this first before I did it uh, the material and appearance editors sort of work in funky units. At the moment mine's in centimeters so I'm just going to divide that by 10. So basically the surface area I'm working with is 11.4902 centimeters. That's the key value that I need to know about in my case. Let's delete this. I don't need the sketch anymore. Right, what next then? Well we need to create the appearance to import the image into. So we're going to go to this button here on the quick access toolbar, the colorful little globy button. This is the appearance. What I'm not going to do is assign the appearance, the texture, to a material. I don't want to sort of make this too complicated, so I'm just purely going to focus on just creating an appearance. Up at the top here, these are the appearances that are in your part file, in your document. There's nothing at all, just the default grayish bland texture. Down here, 
this is the appearance library. Now, in my previous video, I created a kumquat library, assuming my company was called kumquat, which it isn't, but I thought it was humorous at the time. And that's just basically empty. These are just sort of just came in from other parts. I'm going to go to the inventor material library. And we're going to use uh, an appearance from the material library that inventor has out the box. A good place to start would be to take an existing rubber texture and then copy it and then take it from there. That's sort of the best way to go. Same as if you were doing a metal. If you were going to import your own metal and give it your own metal texture, start off with an existing metal texture. Just It's just best to do that. Right, so we're going to take the rubber black texture and then we're going to add it to the document materials. And then we're going to create a duplicate of it and call this tire. Good. You with me so far? Super. We're going to edit that new texture. And I tell you what, before we edit this new texture, so we can see stuff happening, I don't want to sort of edit the texture, nothing happened, and then at the end go, here it is, poof, and it works perfectly. Uh, let's make sure that the texture is applied before we start editing it. So I'm going to pick up, oh, and another thing, don't make the entire part file your tire texture, because it's going to wrap the image around the entire part and you're not gonna you don't want to tie a tread texture on the sidewall and in the inside that would be stupid so let's make the entire part uh, rubber see and then let's make the faces here here and here let's right click on those faces go to the properties of those faces and then let's make those tire okay so we've now got two textures applied to the model. Everything is rubber except these three top faces, which is where I want my texture to be. So let's come back into here. Let's edit the tired texture. And let's start making some magic happen. Right, how do we import our image? Well, Autodesk haven't made it very user-friendly. And if anyone from Autodesk is watching this, what is this about? This, this big white box here, this is a browse button. Click it. It's a browse button. What? What? Anyway, select your image, and that will import it into this appearance. So we're now using the image from the internet in our appearance. But as you can see, it is just this is why we need to start knowing the numbers and we need to start playing with it a bit. Inventor doesn't know how big our model is, it doesn't know what the texture is, so we need to start configuring it a bit. We can start to see, we're, you know, there's the starting point for it. So we're, we're kind of getting there. We're getting there. Next thing we're going to do. Um, yeah, here's another here's another important thing to do. Let's just uh, let's just save what we've done so far. Let's apply that. Come out of here. Go to the view tab and then change your visual style to realistic. Right? It sort of looks counterproductive because it's now vanished. But seriously, trust me, having realistic selected makes the world of difference because your images and your textures behave more realistically under the realistic setting. So we'll just change that to realistic and let's come back into the tire texture. We can't see anything, so what we're going to do is just increase the image fade a bit so we can now see the texture a bit better. Let's just uh, drag that up. I'm not sure why it isn't sort of visible by default, but you know, it is what it is. Let's go back into the properties of the image. Right, the tire texture is going in the wrong direction to our model. We're sort of, we're, we're tailoring this texture to be bespoke to our model. So we need to sort of tailor this to suit. Inventor doesn't know what orientation the tire was text was modeled in. You know, it could be flipped over 90 degrees. It could be sort of turned around. So we need to we need to do it. We need to put the effort in the elbow grease in to get this to be correct. So the the first thing we're going to do is get the scale right. We're going to get the size of the image right. Now we did take a measurement earlier on. The size of the surface we need this texture to go across is 11.4902 centimeters. So we're going to go to the sample size, which is the size of the image, and we're going to change this to 11.4902 centimeters. That's that. Not quite right. We need to rotate it. Oh, and by the way, make sure this is ticked as well. This locks the aspect ratio, so it's always going to be, you know, the same length and width. In my case, that's true. In your case, it might not be. But having this ticked, make sure they're both the same. If you untick that, you can have a different width and height value. Okay, for the rotation, as you can see, the image is not right. If you drag this little slide bar, you can rotate the image, which uh, looks quite good. But we know that it's good. It, you can just tell visually that it just needs to be rotated by 90 degrees. And there we are. 
Right, what it has done as well is it's tiled the image and the base point, the starting base point for the image is kind of wrong. So it's tiled the image sort of exactly in the mid plane of the tire. So we need to get rid of this. So for the tileage at the bottom, for the vertical tile, we're going to say don't tile it at all. So we just basically want to use one of these image textures and don't tile it. But as I said, the, the starting base point is incorrect. It's sort of starting right in the middle of the face or the three faces if you like so to get the right offset what we need to do is take the size of the image and divide that by two and then offset the image by that so here's the image size we're going to divide that by two so 5.7451 so we're going to come into the x value of the offset and we're going to say right offset the image basically we're bunking the image in the negative x value we're going to bunk it along by 5.741 5.7 for five one centimeters. <laughs> Look at that. And that is sweet as a nut. That is absolutely sweet as a nut. I haven't got this link selected because I don't want it to move in the Y value. I'm quite happy with that. All I needed to do was just bunk it along that way. If you didn't have the negative value in it, it would have bunked it along the other way. And yeah, it's effectively sort of over here now. Not applied to any material, so yeah, we need to put a negative value in there. So that is now wrapped exactly, precisely across my three faces. Looking wonderful. It's looking absolutely wonderful. However, we're perfectionists around here and we want this to look utterly pristine and perfect. Uh, you could say, oh, I'm happy with that. That's enough for me. Well, it ain't enough for me. And if you're watching a YouTube video, it means you want to be the best. And I'm going to tell you, how to be the best. We're going to make this look like a proper tire, boys. We're going to make this look beasting. We're going to, Pirelli ain't got nothing on our tyres. So what's the main difference between a proper tyre and this tyre here, apart from this one isn't real and a real tyre is real in rubber and this one is just digital pixels? Well, a real tyre has indentations, it has tread depth. Ours doesn't. So we need to start doing that. To make it a little bit more, little bit more realistic, we need to add a bit of depth to the image. But how would you do that? An image is just a flat picture. Well, that's what this bump selection here is. A bump is... It's effectively an indentation. You're creating an indentation, a visual groove on the image. How do, we, how do, how do you do that? How do you, well, what we're going to do is we're going to say, let's create a bump, and we're going to use our original texture as the bump. We're superimposing the original image on top of the image and using it as an indentation. It's really, it's, it is really quite clever how you can do this. So we're going to just input the exact same values as we had earlier. So the image, the bump image, is in exactly the same place as the um, the actual appearance. So let's just times this by two. So that was the original scale value, 11.4902. So the sample size is 11. 0.4902 centimeters and for the offset that was uh, you know, okay, 5.7451 so offset minus 5.7451 centimeters uh, tile non no tileage in the vertical and for the rotation value we're going to go 90 happy days that apply that but yeah, it's not done anything I know it's not done anything what we need to do is adjust the bump amount at the moment zero is the bump amount It's doing nothing so oh, watch this watch this oh look at that doesn't that look absolutely super so we can bump it in the positive direction or we can bump it in the negative direction to be honest you know it sort of looks the same <laughs> it, yeah it's, it kind of looks the same but I think I'm gonna leave it at plus one Right, what else can we do? Well, I, you know, I'm happy with that. That looks absolutely super to me. You can start changing some of the other settings, though. For example, the reflectivity. We can say, do we want this to be sort of shiny? It's just start to look a bit fake and a bit, you know, unnatural. Um, so, you know, so don't, don't go too overboard with the settings and make it look too ridiculous. Um, the glossiness, yeah, that starts to look like it's soaking wet. So we don't really, do we? It, it, it looks nice though, doesn't it? But let's just not get carried away. Let's have zero glossiness. Um, for the reflectivity, let's put a little bit on there. So that sort of works hand in hand with glossiness though. Uh, if it's not glossy, there's nothing to reflect. So yeah, I'll do. I'm happy with that. Um, 
And for the highlights, we can make this a non-metallic or a metallic material. And, you know, it's personal preference, what you think looks best. Let's apply that. And that's it. That's as good as it. It looks super. I'm really chuffed with that. That looks awesome. That does look like a proper tyre. Um, and, you know, earlier on when I was saying make this uh, the the realistic visual texture, if you change it back to shaded, you know, the, arguably the texture looks better. It looks more real, but it just doesn't handle the texture in the right way. You can't get it to, to not tile in the way it's doing there. So, yeah, it's a shame. You could probably play around with the settings and get it to look, you know, as sort of um, as bumpy and as realistic as that. If you played around with the settings enough, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy enough with that. Let's make this perspective because everything looks best in perspective. Uh, let's turn on the plain room. Oh my god, that just looks absolutely amazing. If I do say so myself. Um, let's look at the front. Yeah, that looks that looks awesome. Right. Okay, for the tire wall, uh, the shadows. The shadows gonna look any good? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, not going to bother going down, down there. So, I guess the next step would be, you know, make ray trace it. Ray tracing it would look awesome. Um, you could, you know, put it in the desert. Tires in the desert. Yeah, that looks actually, that looks pretty naff. Uh, stuck guard, courtyard. Meh. That looks alright. I'm, I'm happy enough with the default plane room. What about the warehouse? God, what does that look like? Oh my god. Ugh. Christ, looks like it's got a disease. Tire cancer. So let's go back to here. Okay, so yeah, that's it. The side, the side wall, the the, the tire side wall. You know, you could, you could maybe go to Google Images and say, you know, let's look for a, a tire side wall texture, and that'll return a load of images which you could then maybe try and superimpose onto the side. But the, the side wall is more of a uh, an emboss or a, or, a, or a decal, decal, however you pronounce it. Than a, than a tile texture, so that would be a bit more difficult to do. I'm not going to go into it in this video because it would be too long. Um, it's probably long enough already as it is, so... Thanks! That's uh, that's how you import an image from the internet, create a material, and make it look absolutely phenomenal. The next step, just don't forget, this tire texture only appears, it only exists in this document. In fact, for something like this, that's all you would need it. Though it would be very rare unless you were manufacturing loads of tires um, of the same size that you would need it in any other part. But it only exists in this document. To upload it into your company's library, you would have to right click on it, add it to your company's library. And it would then be in the company library for everyone else to use. Um, but, yeah, look at that. I can't get enough of that. That's just awesome. I wish the sidewall was a bit more glossier, but, you know, if I had, 20, you know, 15, 20 more minutes, I would make that sort of look like this, but hey-ho. Thank you very much. Hopefully someone found that helpful. Uh, even if you're not modelling a tyre yourself and it's something else, you know, a wood texture, the exact same principles apply. Um, so if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. Uh, if you like the video, please press the thumbs up button. That helps me a lot. It gets the video shared around and improves the search results for my videos. And the more views, the more subscribes, subscribers I get, the more videos I'll do. So it makes me feel like people are interested in, uh, and are actually watching these and, and getting something from it. So please subscribe if you want to see more videos. And yeah, thank you very much, guys. And until next time, see ya.